After creating the template of the DB schedule, I can start fitting it by inserting the loads of each circuit and calculate the total connected load and the main demand load manually using a calculator. But if I did it that primitive way, it means that I'll be taking much of time to fill up this form and time might vary according to the number of loads connected to this DB. Fortunately, we don't have to do it the primitive way since Excel software offers us the advantage of solving equations and counting numbers using efficient methods. What I will do now is to define the criteria of adding the loads for each face. I will start with the R face. I will click on the cell, then type equal sum, then open a bracket, then hold my control key and select all the cells that I want to add them all together. Then I will close the bracket and click enter. Now what I did is I just added all these cells over here and the sum is in the R phase. In fact, we will only have one load here because we can't connect two or more loads for one phase. Simply, I cannot add water heater and air conditioner load in one phase. Now I will do the same for the Y phase. Equal sum, open a bracket, and add the loads. You will notice that the function of summation is clearly shown here in the formula bar. Now if I click on the Y, you will see that the formula is sum of K7 to P7. K indicates the columns and the numbers indicate the rows of the Excel sheet. I'll continue making the addition equal sum of the B face loads. Now I finished making the faces or the addition of the R, Y, and B. Now, instead of doing this for all circuits, I will simply select the three faces at once and then click at the below corner and drag the mouse below to assign the same summation formulas to the rest of the circuit's faces. So, Excel here is acting intelligently. I'll move on now and go to the total lighting because I want to add the total of the lighting loads and give the addition or the sum in this cell. So I will type equal sum, open a bracket, and then click on control and add all these cells at once. Now I will repeat the same procedure but using the easy way. The easy way is instead of again making the formula for each total separately, I can easily click on the corner of this total lighting or this predefined formula and give its properties to the other loads since I already want the total of each face and load to be indicated in this or in these cells. Now, I will also make the formula for the total connected load. The formula will be the sum of the three phases, the R, Y, and B. Again, it's a sum formula of R, Y, and B. Next, I will define the demand factors for each load type. But first, let me explain what is meant by the term demand factor or a diversity factor, which you may come across when designing an electrical distribution system. Demand factor is the maximum load demanded by the system at a given time. Let me explain this the easy way. Suppose that you earn a monthly salary of 20K and your total monthly spending is 10K so you are actually demanding a 50% of your monthly salary. So the factor will be 0.5. This means that the demand factor is always between zero and less than or equal to one. On the other hand, diversity factor 
is the ratio of the sum of individual maximum demands of a system to the maximum demand of the whole system. In our case here, we separated the loads according to its purposes. That means for lighting loads, for example, throughout the day, we will not be turning them on for 24 hours. The maximum demand will be at the evening time. Also, depending on the nature of the project, whether it's commercial, industrial, or residential, we can study and envisage the demand factor. However, demand and diversity factors may be stated also in your wiring code or electrical regulations of your country. For example, let's have a look at the wiring code of Qatar, which is also following the British standards. Now, we will open the chapter for demand and diversity load. It's section 12 and demand and diversity factors. So if we come across the table which states the diversity factors in percentage for, for example, general loads, air conditioner, cookers, water heaters, and others, you'll see that for general loads, there's 60%, air conditioning 90, and so on. And this also depends from country to country. Some countries are the temperature very high, then the demand for the air conditioning will be much more than other countries. So let's get back to our schedule. Now, I will define the demand factor for lighting as a 0 0.6, as we have seen now, points for the sockets also 0 0.6, air conditioner will be 0 0.9, water heaters will be 0 0.3, cookers 0.4, and other loads 0.5. Now, I'll define these cells here and name them as demand, Now the formula will be equal bracket the demand factor which is 0.6 for the lighting multiplied by the total connected load for lighting. Now I want also to get the total or the demand load for the power sockets. Instead of also defining the formula again and again, simply I will drag the mouse from the first form formula that we just defined to the other cells, and it will also give me the multiplication of this cell by the total power. So let's see what is the formula here. For example, it's L35, which means column L and row 35 multiplied by the L32, which is the total power, and so on. The total demand load will be the sum of these all demands. So it's sum of these demands. What is left now is the balancement or the balancing of the dB. But first, let's have a quick idea about the balancement of the dB and why it is important. Since this dB is a three-phase type, then we have to balance the loads or the current passing through the three phases. So what might happen if we don't balance the system? Well, the main drawback of this inaccuracy is affecting the neutral cable by overloading it. And that is because the neutral is implemented for the system to allow the flow of unbalanced loads and harmonics caused by electronics with an acceptable percentage. So if the imbalanced loads exceeds 10%, then the system is considered unbalanced and might affect the neutral line. That was just a very simple justification of why we have to balance the loads for the dB. Now, let's define the formula of the balance check. Let's look at this file and see how the formula looks like. So the balance check equals maximum RYB minus minimum 
among the three faces over the maximum load among the three faces. And this answer will be converted into a percentage. So we will have to multiply it by 100. So if the answer is less than or equal to 10%, the system is considered balanced. Otherwise, or if it's greater than 10%, it will be considered as unbalanced. Now let's get back to the Excel sheet and define our formula. First, I will make a new row here and insert a new row to define the formula. I'll merge this cell and the other cell. This will be called formula and we will define our formula in this cell. So we said the formula is equal maximum of three faces minus the minimum of the three faces as well. Let's close the bracket divided by maximum. of three faces into 100. Now let's close the brackets. How many brackets over here? Three brackets, so we have to close the three brackets. This is how our formula looks like. Now, I will define the cell that will indicate if the DB is balanced or not. It will equal if this value, which is the, the formula value, is less than or equal to 10, then I want to see a word balanced. Otherwise, unbalanced. And close the bracket and enter. If you have taken a C++ or programming course, you will be familiar with the if statement and how it works. Now, let us make a trial and identify some loads and see if this schedule is actually solving these calculations.